Hello, and welcome to the second episode of Don't Feed the Geeks, presented by the Long Island Comic Guys. Today, we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Tom Travers, local Long Island artist. Hello, Tom. How are you? Hello, guys. Tom. Right. Very good. Great to be here. We also have a bunch of topics to talk about today. We were pretty busy this last couple of weeks with, uh, besides our own holiday events, we had a Grasshopper Comedies charity uh, raffle that we attended, uh, Jim went to WinterCon. We all had our uh, Long Island Comic Guys Santa swap, Yankee swap, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're going to do a nice little interview with Tom here. Find out more about him, where you can get his artwork. Please buy his artwork. It's awesome. Because <laughs> if you don't buy it, I'm just going to buy more. <laughs> all right. So you guys want to jump right into uh, talking about the Grasshopper charity event that yeah. they have? Just to quickly say, the... Grasshopper Comics does this charity event for the John Thiessen's Children Foundation. It's an awesome foundation. Uh, John Thiessen did come uh, later in the evening. Uh, they had a boatload of stuff. Uh, people donated toys. They raised eighteen thousand dollars cash for the raffle tickets, which is amazing. It was the highest um, amount they've ever raised, and it was awesome that they do this event. Shout out to Grasshopper Comics how, for how, doing that. How many that. years have they been doing this? Do you know? It's been uh, a, a lot. It's a really long time. Yeah, I think that he might have said maybe 20 years. Wow. They've been doing it for a long time. It seems like they get more money every year. <laughs> yeah, great. I think last yeah. year he said it was 15000 Yeah. And this year it made like another $3,000 jump. It seems jump. to always come on. A lot of uh, a lot of great uh, items were up for um, raffle. You know, a lot of people donated awesome stuff. Adam Kubert came down and spent more time than he was supposed to there. He unexpectedly was doing art for people it was it was a really awesome event i give them uh, huge kudos for doing such great work on that charity event because i don't think anything goes to their store at all for that event. yeah no, yeah. It's, i think it's completely all proceeds uh, are for the charity plus they donate a bunch of toys yeah too so yeah they i brought toys, money plus yeah. they donate they do the toys for tots i think it's toys for tots and the, i think it, it might have gone to the foundation I'm maybe not, it's the I'm same foundation I yeah know. i think I it was uh, the john decent's uh foundation but that was an awesome thing i just wanted to give them uh um, a quick shout out for that because that's an awesome charity that, uh, event that they run. Yeah, it's always a standout. Good stuff of the year. Very cool stuff. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of other artists there. Um, I was set up at my little table. Yeah, Tom, <laughs> Tom was there. Um, I don't know if you guys know Love by Lula. She was also there doing artwork. Um, a couple other guys too. Cubert uh, School guys. Were yeah, there. the Cubert School brings like the whole crew of guy uh, <laughs> students. They line up and. They do some incredible stuff. They're really good. Yeah. You, um, you, you've been going to that shop for a long time. Yeah, too, that's my right? shop. Yeah. So if you want to track every week. me down, you might find me there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I still go there every week pretty much. Yeah, I get, get my weekly comics there and I've been going there for years. So I love that shop and, uh, do a lot of things with them. Like to let me come in and, you know, set up on, if they're having like free comic book day, I'll go in and set up and whenever they're having special events, they they're pretty about cool more than a few me. prints from you last yeah, free comic I day. set up with my prints <laughs> and do sketches for people and stuff it's always cool and they have they have like a great uh, following people come from all over to check out Grasshopper so they have a good little customer base and people come in and out it's great good stuff yeah I've gone in there a few times the the owner John awesome guy has always been very friendly with me mm-hmm. um, the other guy the younger guy I think his name is Dan he's a uh, I, I guess you have to catch him on a good day because, and I haven't done that yet. I've I've never had a great experience with them. It's like, <laughs> like all right, I think I think they um, cater to their locals more than anything else. I feel like my, some of my raffle tickets might have got lost, but you know, <laughs> I was happy to donate to the vet foundation regardless. Yeah, right? it all, it all goes to a good place. <laughs> yeah, and, and they yeah. they do more than just the comics. I mean, they've got a lot of Warhammer games yeah. there, a yeah. lot of the Star Wars uh, board yeah, the games. Gaming is so big the, there. the graphic pretty, novel selection pretty, is insane. Well, the, yeah. the largest I've ever oh seen my God. in the entire area. wall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I bought a couple of paints there to, to paint some figures. Mm-hmm. So they, they do got a nice. But they have all the modeling stuff too. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, really good stuff. Yep. Really good stuff. Apparently, the basement is uh, quite an amazing. Art. We hear about this basement oh, a lot, but uh, basement. we got to figure out how to get in that basement. Yes, I think uh, one of the few people I know, uh, our good friend uh, Mike Caro, has uh, has been in that. He's basement. been down there. Yeah, of course he has. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think he's he's bought a couple big books from John. Nice. Uh, in the past, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember which one specifically. P- probably M- Mike would probably prefer that I don't say which one. <laughs> so we'll just leave it at that. I've sent some request lists to 
Dan, the younger guy who works there, for like old books. Never anything of any value. I always mm-hmm. get like old '90s comics, but, <laughs> yeah. but something go, no one else. He'll is looking go down for, and try right. and grab them from the basement. I'm like, nice. <laughs> so, so you haven't been down there? I've never been oh. permitted down there. But I would love. <laughs> so to it's like a there. stockpile. Down yeah, there? like all the old stuff because they have a good selection up top, but there's always more that you know. I would love to check out what they have down there, but mm-hmm. you know. Interesting. Uh, but if you make guy. a request, they'll find they'll pull stuff for you. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they seem uh, they seem like good guys overall. Very I just I don't know. I, I've just hasn't I haven't had a positive experience with the younger guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another guy that was there, uh, artist uh, Eddie Avila. He's uh, I've ran into him at a couple of uh, mm. events, also local stuff. He's uh, he's a pretty good artist. Too. He was next to Lula? he was he, yeah he was at uh, yeah, Lula's table. He was, the, he, was yeah. he did an amazing uh, Venom sketch cover. I was, it was yeah, his really, stuff cool. Was really cool. Yeah, um, hope to have him and uh, Lula on the show as well. Yeah, soon. Lula's stuff is great too. Yeah, Very she cool. was her her stuff was really popular um, at the event that night. She stayed for a little while. It was uh, it was it was really a great event. Um, I I give them. Tons of kudos for running that charity event, especially. Did you, get if it was any, did you pull any? Did you get anything off the um, wall? It, when they started doing the uh, regular raffle, it yeah. got to the point where so many of the same people were winning. They're like, "All right, they stopped pulling tickets." And they're like, "Did yeah. you get anything yet? Did you get anything?" <laughs> I wound up actually getting a pretty awesome uh, Wonder Woman um, Stanley Archer nice. uh, print st- signed by Stanley Archer. So that was pretty cool. He's really good. Yeah, it was. It was a. It was an awesome. Uh, it was an awesome print. Nice. I've actually been lucky enough to get a couple things. Win a couple. I want to. Uh, yeah. Uh, a page last last year. It was a nice page. Nice. Yeah, uh, uh, and we gave that out to a uh, to a Long Island Comic Guy uh, raffle. Yes, we which did. was yeah. kind of cool. That, which was awesome. So we were reciprocating the love out yeah. there to other comic book geeks. <laughs> um, Tom, our, our good friend Tom Pilar, he uh, he won a page when nice. he was there. I forgot which artist page he won. It was definitely a Detective Comics page. I don't think Batman was on it, but it had a couple of good shots of Commissioner Gordon. Nice. It was a big artist, too. I'm upset at myself. I don't remember who it is, but I'll find out, and we'll include it in the show notes of what that was. Yeah, the original art selection at the raffle seems to be getting more and more awesome every year so they always get great donations from like incredible artists the, the one i really wanted it was a full bob layton iron man oh yeah and I it, saw was, that it was almost that was like awesome. a, a, yeah. a a cover recreation and i was like oh my god <laughs> the first guy who got his ticket pulled he originally he said like i'll take the iron Went man right he's, like, Wait. Oh, no. he's like i'll actually take the joe gaiella um superman i was like oh i, was like, I, I i'm actually lucky to have a joe gaiella um Flash, Golden Age, Silver Age, Flash, nice. uh, racing next to each other. Yeah, so I was like, if I would have won, it definitely would have been for the Bob Layton. But um, regardless, I was just happy to donate to the to the charity yeah, event, it's and fun. you know, I didn't Good. pull anything out. But you know, it's it's fun. A lot of people show up. Um, there was tons of people. The raffle took forever. I was like, there was just so <laughs> so many people donating. Like all those items are donated. Yeah. So you know, people take their time out to you know donate this. How many items awesome do you think they had? Art. I couldn't even give you a number. Maybe like a comic. Um, non art related, they might have had a hundred. Wow. And uh, art related, maybe 20, 30. So yeah, it was it's pretty fantastic. awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to that event. Um, yeah, and then uh, I guess next topic would be uh, WinterCon, right? Jim, you, you made it to that that same day. Unfortunately, you couldn't do Grasshopper. Couldn't do both. Going to WinterCon. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So it was a little, little hectic uh, trying to do both. But WinterCon was. Um, it was a decent show. It's uh, not one of the best ones in the area, but it, it's decent. Uh, if you really want to get out there and meet some artists, there were some pretty big ones there. You know, we had uh, Billy Tucci that was there. He's always a pleasure to, to stop by and see what he's doing. Um, Kreez was there, drawn like a madman. Uh, some of the sketches that he was pulling out was just absolutely amazing. And yeah, he he's, is, he's another guy, a local uh, favorite of ours. The guy's going to be the next Jim Lee for sure. <laughs> Got to get him on here before he, uh, yeah, I know. Before he before becomes uh, before he's too before big. Before he becomes big chief big uh, creative us. officer of <laughs> DC. Yeah, um, he's he's is awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, the only problem, it's a great show. Not a lot of comics. Uh, not a lot of comic boots. There's, you know, you still had the, you know, Royal was there. And I feel like Best people don't and, sell too well there because everybody's gambling. Yeah, the gambling, <laughs> or, and there's a lot of trinkets, all these yeah. little trinkets. Yeah. And it, people aren't going to buy there. No, buy big books. some of the booths look like they were garage sales. I mean, yeah. it was just a little crazy. But uh, that's what I've heard from a lot of the uh, vendors. It's just it's not worth it for them to go. Yeah. Um, the the auto. I was there. One of my main reasons I was going was um, big Star Wars uh, autograph hunter. So uh, you know we had. Um, um, 
Colin Cantworth, who was the modeler for the Death Star and the X-Wing and a couple of the other uh, fighters. He was there signing. Um, we're going to get into him a little bit more later. Uh, but I had some issues uh, with uh, getting an autograph from him. But like I said, we'll, we'll get more into that later. Uh, we'll, it's a big discussion we want to get into. And just to clarify, um, this is actually held at Resorts World Casino, which oh. is right off of the JFK. Yep. Um, usually it's always the first weekend in December, right? Yeah, usually. So it's, I mean, it's it's okay for someone who wants to go to a smaller con, maybe like kind of Bring like dip, dip their toe in the water of uh, comic book conventions. It's kind of like a good warm up. Um, but overall, for like the for the big hunters, it's not really a place you're going to find a ton of big books or you know big celebrities or you know artists. You know, you get some local people there. Who, we had Sean Austin. Yeah. I mean, he's somewhat big. Yeah, right? that was, I mean, I, that I, was probably I was, their biggest. I was name. surprised that yeah, I don't think they've ever gotten anybody as big as him. No, no, he was probably the biggest name there. He but was yeah, signing and everything. He was signing, taking cool. pictures, did walking around. I did see him. Was he doing well? Did it look like? Yeah, he had some pretty big. You know, he had some, a pretty big line at, at certain times. Of, but it was nice to see him there. He um, he was at um, like Baltimore. Awesome he was. Uh, he was not at Baltimore. Sure? Rhode Island. Rhode Island, Rhode Island last year. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah when, Stranger Things. So he's he fresh, in fresh in people's yeah. minds. So that, he was. So. It was funny. We were waiting online um, for someone else. I think I was Luke Cage. I was waiting in line for uh, Mike Coulter. I was waiting in his line to get my Luke Cage number one sign, uh, and he had to do this photo um, session. And he's like, "I've got 15 minutes." He's like, "If you guys want to go really quick, I'll do everything." I mean, he had like 20 people in his line, nice. and and he knocked through them really quickly. That's cool. And at the end, like I was like, I just started Rudy chant. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, he started laughing and like putting his hands up in there. <laughs> he seems like, like a cool yeah, guy. Yeah, he, he seems like a good naturally guy. good. He guy. was well engaged yeah. at uh, WinterCon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was probably he was the biggest name. He had some wrestlers, and uh, they uh, always have wrestlers. Always <laughs> have wrestlers. Uh, but other than that, it was it was an all right show for what I needed to get done. Um, so you were just mainly hunting the autograph. I just needed one autograph. Yeah, that was really. It, yeah. <laughs> and there was another guy from Star Wars, uh, Jerome Blake. Um, but I I already had him. What I did, did he do in Star Wars? He was um, he was one of the chancellors um, on the Senate. Okay. Um, Original trilogy or like prequels? Or prequels. Prequels, okay. Prequels. So, Jim, then, do you want to talk about your Star Wars poster now? Do I want to talk about my Star later. Wars poster? Uh, we could talk about my Star yeah, Wars poster. So, yeah, Might I do. Well. I do have a big Star Wars poster I've been working. It's been 12 years in the making. Um, I've got over 70 signatures on it, autographs from anybody that's been in a Star Wars movie, um, not the animation. So, we're talking anything from Star Wars New Hope all the way to prequels, the new sequels. ones, um, um, even the ones that are out today. That's um, clarify that this is an original Star Wars poster. It's an original 1977 (laughs) Star Wars poster. Uh, I think it's a poster C. Um, So it's been a a 12-year journey. Um, Hopefully, you know, I'm I'm one of those people, I I don't think I'm ever going to get done with it, but I'd like to. Um, Just get as far as you can. As far as I can. I know uh, we got coming up soon some big news that was just announced a couple weeks ago was uh, Harrison Ford doing a huge send-in signing um, with uh, Cool Waters Production and uh, I think it was KL... KLP Sports. And he's uh, never done anything like that before. Not, right? not ascending like this. Um, uh, it's a little pricey. Um, that's the only problem. You know, you got everything from you know to a pop signature or you know to a photo to a pop signature, which is almost nine hundred dollars, to a poster of my, my magnitude, uh, which is fifteen hundred. So it's 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 not. Let's something reiter- for like, reiterate though that Jim has all the big names. I have all the except big except for Harrison Ford. Uh, so. Harrison Ford, and I don't have. Um, um, uh, what is what's his name? Uh, Kenny, Kenny Baker. Baker. Kenny Baker unfortunately passed mm-hmm. away three months before I was supposed to get his signature at Rhode Island Comic Con uh, two years ago. You got Carrie Fisher. But I was though. able to get Carrie Fisher right before she died. Um, she was such a great lady. I had such a great conversation. A conversation with her I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. Um, where she held up the line um, to talk to me because I asked her about her mom. Her mom was sick like the week before and um, I asked her how her mom was feeling and uh, she actually held the line up and we talked about her mom for 10, 15 minutes, which was kind of a cool story. That's amazing. Um, And everything from uh, Mark Hamill, who I got years ago when he was reasonably priced uh, (laughs) where he's not right now. Um, So it's, you know, it's, I've been lucky enough to get a lot of these people. Um, so it's, it's it's a project that I feel like I'm never going to be done. I want it to be done, but there's always somebody else. I know we got a new show. We got not a new show, but we got a show coming up in March or April, East Coast mm-hmm. Comic Con. Mm-hmm. I think there's three people there that I don't have. 
Um, I'm hoping I get my poster back in time from Harrison Ford to hopefully get those signatures. And again, these are people. I think that, Harrison takes a little precedence. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, you need to have the big three, even though that that is a big number to pay for a signature. It's just like on your poster, if you if you don't have it, you'd regret. It's that re- and it, it, to on, me, it'd be yeah. worthless. I mean, yeah. it's priceless now to it, but he, I need him. Yeah. And you're never going. Unfortunately, he's the type of guy that it's not going to do a show. Uh, yeah. you, you're not going to be able to get him on the street. Yeah, it's just not his scene. No. It, it's not it. So. Um, I think it's well worth it. It's it for yeah, it's well worth it, especially because it's your it. money too. It's not our money. It's, yeah. <laughs> we're we're yeah. going to tell you. Yeah, to do I encourage. It. <laughs> no, you would definitely regret it. I think yeah. you're definitely enablers here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I mean that's 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 that. Um, I don't know where it, uh, where you want to go with that on. I mean, I think what we should talk about probably next. So we just recently did. Um, you know, we're recording this a little earlier. Uh, we're in mid December right now. We had just had our Long Island Comic Guys Santa Swap, or if you want to call it a Yankee Swap. Uh, it's one of the events I look forward to all year. Um, it's either we bring a comic or a piece of original comic artwork valued at $100. Almost no one in our group ever follows that (laughs) because the the stuff that shows up is amazing. I mean, it's just a good time to be able to spend. And I feel like it's one of the few times that all of us actually make sure we show up and get together because, you know, we try to get together, you know, every Wednesday for New Comic Book Day. There's usually always some amount of people who show up, but it's not always everybody. Yeah, you know, it's always someone different. Like, you know, I try to go to them. Matt's usually there. But, you know, it's like we get five or six people for this event. You know, we have about... 12 to 15, you know, strong group of like guys that we hang out with in the comic book world. And, you know, everybody pretty much shows up this year. It was nice. You know, some of the wives and girlfriends came and it was, it was just an awesome. And event. they actually enjoyed themselves yeah, unless yeah, they were yeah. lying to us. They're just <laughs> yeah. really good at it. Yeah. They were probably lying. To us, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think next year, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm going to consider hosting and, uh, you know, we'll do like a potluck, which I think it'll be even more fun and, you know, more casual setting. Cause it's tough at one point, you know, you're sitting around the table, you can't really talk to everybody at the same time you know i feel like a little bit more of a bigger open space will be cool yeah for sure yeah i like that idea a lot <clears throat> plus you have the look looky lose from the restaurant looking at what you got I know. there's yeah, one I guy know. who was, yeah. uh, was yeah. a little, little worried about him yeah i i made sure i stood up when i saw that guy come over <laughs> <laughs> i was like hey we got a couple of big guys here buddy <laughs> but yeah like uh, you guys want to talk about some of the awesome gifts that we get uh, there, was, uh, there, was, I, w- there was many of them yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, just, I mean we could talk about all of them if you want there, I, was, I, I I feel like we have to start with the fact that yeah. our good friend uh, com- um, I'm sorry tattoo artist Mike Harrow who we hope uh, to have on at some point yeah he's from I believe it's Undead Ink yeah Undead Ink the yep, tattoo. Right. in Oceanside firm uh, yeah firm or whatever I don't know how it's tattoo Parlor, parlor, parlor? Sure. okay. Um, but this has he, many tattoos, yeah, as you guys. I, 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 do, I have zero. You know, my dad's not a big fan of it, and uh, you know, I, just I think never, I'm the only one. Here it just never stuck. Them. I don't have. But, any. Uh, yeah, if I ever no. do get a tattoo, it's going to be from Mike Cara. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's he just did this amazing uh, Doctor Doom painting. Uh, we put a little bit of a snippet of it on our um, Long Island Comic Guys Instagram account. We're actually waiting for a digital picture from him to post like a really nice copy of it, but it was incredible. I was like, Mike, there's no way this is valued at $100. And he like, got, <laughs> got it framed. Yeah, and he oh, got it framed. Yeah. The, the frame itself was probably $100. I was like, Mike, yeah, I was like, you, awesome. don't, you don't understand the rules of this game. <laughs> he goes, it's fine. He's like, and he's like, yeah, I was like, I'll do a painting for everyone. I was like, yeah. He's like, you're just ridiculous. He's such a super generous guy. He's, he's awesome. Mm-hmm. He has an incredible collection of comics. Mm-hmm. We do really hope to talk to him one day. But And he's one of the guys who, like, we haven't seen him, I think, a few of us exactly, in a very long yeah. time. But like, he made it out for this. That's one Everybody of the main And I, and I feel like everybody just has a good time there. It's just, it's a fun event. And uh, there's other stuff too. I mean, Billy Tucci uh, was nice enough to drop off an awesome uh, piece of artwork that he did of Black Cat, which I think is maybe the best character that he draws. It's like, he, beautiful. Yeah. Like, even, even everyone I say in, that he draws is amazing. Every yeah. Black Cat that he draws. It, it is in a circle. I feel like everyone like has like a Black Cat. For him. <laughs> like, all those guys are who, who are his buddies. Then uh, what? Are, what was some other guests? Uh, Tom Travers here did again. He didn't follow the rules. <laughs> three pieces of original art. Um, three, was it two prints? Uh, yeah, threw in some prints. Two prints, three, three original three, arts, and three originals. Uh, beautiful Superman statue. <laughs> yeah, Superman there were, statue. There good. were three original arts. Was yeah, I didn't yeah, realize so, there were yeah. three. It was yeah. uh, Snowflame, which Saber if you tooth. don't know about him, I need to understand we, Snowflame. Oh God, we, we you about need Snowflame. to find out about him on your own, and I want to encourage <laughs> our <laughs> listeners to do the same thing. <laughs> Is you look into Snowflame, it is hilarious. Just a quick heads up, his first appearance is also his last appearance. So, you know, I'll just leave it 
there. So this is a real character. Yes. yes. I don't remember the book. Marvel? I, DC? I, I don't know where it's from. We need I, Tom Pilar. <laughs> yeah, t- Tom and Jeff are experts <laughs> on, uh, wow. on um, Snowfall. Right, on my own time. I'll check it out. Yeah, I'll but, check it uh, out. <laughs> there's also the, the Sabretooth was amazing. I, I, I was almost going to steal that just for the Sabretooth. <laughs> and then the Captain America was really cool, too. You do prints of that. Uh, yeah, I did prints Captain of that. America, yeah, right? I've, I've I've colored that before. Of it, but I do prints. That's uh, awesome. And then uh, do you want to weigh in on that uh, little Superman statue, oh, which is now God. our new, uh, yeah. uh, what is it, <laughs> elephant, a white elephant? White it's going to be the white. So yeah. who, who actually wound up, our, friend, our good friend Jeff uh, Bondock wound up stealing uh, Travis's artwork <laughs> from someone else. And But along with that was this god awful <laughs> Superman <laughs> statue which we'll yeah. let um, we'll let Tom share with the story on yeah. that I got this statue I mean I I was just you know thumbing through Facebook or whatever and I saw this ad for a really uh what looked like a beautiful, you know, Superman statue of Superman with crypto. And it looked like it was like, you know, based on Alex Ross art, it was like beautifully sculpted and painted and it was only 30 bucks. I was like, Oh man, this is awesome. So I, uh, you know, quickly put it in my cart, bought it and I got it a few weeks later. And it, what I got was like a, you know, sixth grade, like ceramics project. <laughs> <laughs> Deformity of Superman. Terrible, terrible statue. I, and <laughs> like, it's just horrible. I think it'd be an insult to even call him Bizarro. Yeah, it's not even, <laughs> not even close. Not even yeah. Worthy. yeah. It's uh, yeah, you'll have to share the link with us for that. Yes. So we can put a warning on yeah. our Instagram yeah, page about that. To, uh, the better business bureau. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're definitely, can, can you do that for companies in China? Affairs? I don't know. <laughs> for can you do that for companies in China? Uh, probably not. <laughs> you know, so I accepted it as a loss, and I decided to throw it in as a uh, little bit of a gag with with my. Stuff, I think that was which was awesome. You perfect. Had, you, yeah, it, made, it got a good laugh because everybody knew about it, and mm-hmm. at least the guys in the group knew about yeah. it. So all the girls so, were like, the, "What is the going on?" Was very confused. <laughs> yeah, I had to, I explained it to my wife. She was like, "Oh my god, that's terrible." <laughs> But yeah, I showed, but, I wound up showing her the original picture. She's like, "Oh, <laughs> but yeah, it's only it was, thirty bucks. Not a not a big loss." Yeah, but, we told uh, we told Jeff though that he has to keep that in his office for a year. So whoever we, we're, that's going to be an <laughs> ongoing gift, along with you know your real gift every year. Whoever winds up with that has to display it in their place of work going keep forward. It. You got to carry the burden for a year. Yeah, c- carry the <laughs> carry the torch. <laughs> Yeah, there's some other awesome stuff too. You got a uh, what was it? What would you, I got the Wonder Woman from um, some great original art. Yes, um, that was it was a sketch cover, right? Yes, yeah, it, was. Yeah. it was. It uh, was. I don't. I don't want to get his name <laughs> wrong. His name is also last name is also Avila. He's Javier Avila. Um, me and me and uh, Jim here both got original artwork for him. And from him, I, Baltimore. We, yeah, I got Baltimore. mine in Baltimore. Yeah. Oh, you got yours in Baltimore? Yeah, Baltimore. It was a Submariner he did for me. Oh, oh I remember you guys that. the day after. Yeah, I got this amazing Spider Woman he, that he did. Did you get the mo- some Masters of the Universe stuff from him, too? At Bal- the no, no, that, that was, was that's Campbell. Chris Campana. Campana. Oh, Campana. Yeah, okay. he's a good dude. Um, okay. I'd, I'd right. love for him to come on at some point, too. Um, he's actually, he, he reached out to me. And he was like, he's like, you know, I'm not really happy with the with the Skeletor and the Chitara, who he did for Jim. He goes, I'm gonna redo that. I was like, that's not necessary. He goes, I know it's not necessary, but I'm still redoing it. I was like, I, yeah, I was like, all right, man, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. He's actually doing um, a mini um, mystery box thing. I think he said it's gonna be about two fifty. He's doing five of them in January, and the theme is Master of the Universe. Wow! So you're I buying was, all five? I was you're like, definitely well. I was like, I'm probably going to get one. I was like, I'm going to use whatever Christmas money I get to get that's, one. That's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Nice. But, yeah, Javier, I mean, great, great, great artist. Another yeah. One. Just I was so happy when I flew it away. Yeah, he, so he, I he reposted will, that. I had my gift stolen from me about eight or nine times. <laughs> that's so. how you stay in the game, though. That's how you stay in the game. Yeah, but I, I was very happy I ended up with that. Yeah, it was it was great. He he reposted that from our story, too, he, I, and, I, and I thanked him um, personally in, like, direct message. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, man, I'm, I'm glad whoever wound up but it really enjoyed it and I was like oh yeah he definitely did so yeah there was uh there was some great comics too you got a you're a huge Omega Red fan yes. our, our good friend Andy brought a first appearance of Omega Red was it X-Men 4 I think it's 4 right? CGC yeah. uh, 9 8 and uh, if anyone who doesn't know Tom he is a huge <laughs> closet Omega Red fan or maybe not so much closet yeah, I'm, I'm out of, I'm out of <laughs> he's out of the closet <laughs> Omega Red fan which is he's a really awesome character I expect him to yeah, blow up villain. pretty soon yeah Good love the, Jim Lee, the whole Jim Lee X-Men era stuff I just love that stuff so 
we'll get more into that. Yeah, later. we'll get into that later. <laughs> um, there was also what? What did you bring? You brought. So the, I brought uh, a um, sketch cover from Ken Lashley. Yeah, another awesome yeah, guy. Like a nut guy. So get him on here. <laughs> yeah, so it was a sketch cover. It was on an X Men blank, but it was of a character from Umbrella Academy, mm-hmm. which I don't know if anybody any, anybody's read. But I just got it because it was amazing. I'd never read the book. But was that written by Gerard Way, the guy from uh, Yes, My Chemical Romance? Yes, 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 yeah. actually. I never read the book, but I'm, mm-hmm. I, I'm aware of it. Yeah. yeah, the cover was beautiful, though. So that was, I was like, I got was it. was a beautiful cover. Uh, yeah. pull there, Tom. <laughs> no, that, 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 was, that was really good. I didn't, I didn't expect anybody <laughs> yeah. to know that. Yeah, but the cover, the cover art was fantastic. Beautiful. Right. It's unbelievable. It's from like 2012. Oh, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Bes- besides being an awesome dude, I love K- Ken Lashley's art. I mean, I think we, we spoke about him last uh, episode. And the, the nicest the guys, guys on yeah. the planet. He's the guy just, is We talked so to him for like nice. an hour each day at Baltimore. I yeah. think if we ever get him as like a guest on the podcast, it might be a, like a three hour podcast <laughs> <laughs> just because he's just such we're a gonna, cool guy to talk to. We're going to be, tr- we're going to try because he's going to be in the area in April. That's right. Yeah. April. So we'll, yeah. can, can, I, can I come to that one? Just yeah, <laughs> sure. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. You're a part of, you're a part of our crew. Mm-hmm. Get, you know, you might, you might be a, a, a special guest today, but you are, <laughs> inside, you're the inner circle of Long Island comic guys. I, I don't think everyone has, Accepted being Long Island comic guys, but you're all Long Island comic guys, yes. kind of now. Yeah. Whether you want to or not. Yeah. <laughs> What, what other books are there? There's an awesome Superman book that um, he can't be here today, Superman but uh, our D- uh, DM Bruce brought a uh, like quad sig. Uh, yeah, it was a Sinclair, Jim Lee, Jim Lee, Lee Scott Neil Snyder, and uh, Neil, Neil Adams. Adams. Neil Adams. Yeah. Yeah. It was a Neil Adams, Adams cover. It was a yeah, that, was an, that was an awesome that was gift. A cool one. We had um, our, our friend Courtney brought a <laughs> first uh, a nine six CGC first Mister Sinister signed by Stan Lee. I was like, guys, how many times do I have to tell you the, the rules of the game? <laughs> but that wasn't all he brought. But it, you know, there was other things attached. To yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll leave those. We'll leave those out. He's, he, what, was Court- the, what was the book? What was the hardcover book? Oh, it was, uh, um, it was Invincible. Invincible. The, first, it was, the first compendium. Oh, okay, so it was like the first fifty issues. That was a heavy. That was a heavy. Game. Gift. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a good book cool. if anybody hasn't read it. Yeah, he, he always outdoes himself, too, with his gifts. Um, but yeah, Stan Lee's signature. Who, who does that? Well, what? He's funny, too, because he always comes with it wrapped, like, so hysterically <laughs> like, bad. <laughs> And then it ends up being something amazing that nobody yeah. expects. Like yeah, one time he, awesome. he bought a first uh, bullseye. Yeah. Oh, that was last yeah. year. Yeah. I yeah. have that. Yeah. Yep. You. <laughs> crazy, crazy. This time he wrapped it in sheet music paper. Yeah. And he uh, he added a special note to it, too. He wasn't aware any of the ladies were going to be there. So it was some colorful terms that he chose. Uh, I got I got yeah. some good art. Tom Velis, um, Batman. I got the Wolverine control. and the yes. Emma Frost. Oh, who, um, yeah. uh, one of them was a that was from Ozzy, right? That was from Ozzy. One of them was a Brazilian artist. They were, I'm pretty they sure. Were both foreign so the the one guy I think the guy who did the Wolverine is actually good friends with the girl who did that black hat for me oh um I don't want to mispronounce her last name but um I I think I wanted to mess so the guy who did the Emma Frost is Del Naira I believe right right and uh he actually hit us up thanking us for for sharing it I saw that on the uh, on the Instagram and I have to track that we'll, we'll put in the notes and uh eventually post the Wolverine to get exactly who did it because you know we want to put the credit out there to, for awesome artists because we're a big uh fans of the comic art but that Wolverine was pretty amazing pretty amazing and uh, oh man, Tom Velez, Velez Batman. Tom Velez. Oh my about God! Yes, yeah, <laughs> please talk about Tom. Tom Velez, who joined us. Uh, he's he's kind of a, a, a. I think he's being a casual friend. He's he's testing the waters. I think he <laughs> he's definitely. Not exactly sure. What I he think he definitely us, yeah. likes us. He's uh he's a big defender of Jeff, which is tough. So <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, but he's a good guy. Um, Jeff. I mean, uh, everyone in our crew is a good guy. Uh, you know. At this point in life, you know, we choose people that we want to spend time with. And I just like, like if someone wasn't a good guy, I was like, yeah, you can't be part of the crew. So like everyone in our crew and, you know, the extended crew members, they're, they're all good people. But yeah, Tom Velez is Batman. That, thing that was Batman was thinking. amazing. And that he was, was awesome. like nervous. So, you know, like Mike Carroll's gift was the first one opening. And he was painting. He and, he's like, and he's like, oh, man, I hope, it on that. I hope my <laughs> Batman's good I enough. Felt, I was like, as dude, soon as I Batman's saw piece, I was like, I'm screwed. It's like, dude, don't worry. Nothing is going to be like that yeah, for the rest of the time. Yeah. But Tom Velez, that Batman was awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so I told him after, like, when I, I told him, it reminded me of the work of Travis Charre, who's one of my favorite artists. And he was like, "Oh yeah, I just started following him recently." After, the, so he had no idea who the artist was, but it still was like, but it was still similar was, to that yeah, style. So it was awesome. It was, yeah, he's he recently did. He had a, a Turtles cover that came out a little while yeah. ago. Um, I think all of us picked that up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. But yeah, he's his art is really good. He, I, I, oh man, he I, was telling me what he was just recently working on too. I think he's been working on some advertising stuff. I, I mean, hopefully we can get him on the show soon too, so he. 
can talk about more about what he's done. But yeah, like that, the Batman was cool. I wound up, uh, I did steal it from our friend Tom Pilari. That was stolen Batman several from, times. He yeah, literally has a tattoo stolen. of multiple Batmans. Yes, yeah. by my carol. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I wound up swapping it back with him for Billy Tucci's uh, Black Hat, who's like, I got to give Billy props on that. The eyes on that were just amazing. It's like, like, it looks like she's staring at you, like these amazing green eyes. Such a great piece. Um, are we forgetting anything? I mean, uh, <laughs> Zach brought a blank cover. Yes. That's, uh, <laughs> hopefully he'll find some time to, to do something. With. So, so I don't know if you guys saw in the story, but um, I added the text, hopefully not empty promises and tag <laughs> Zach on the blank cover. And he laughed. He's like, I promise I will draw this. And uh, Mike Carroll was actually the one who stole that because he wanted yeah. original Zach work. But Zach's a very good artist. Yeah. He's a, he's a good friend of ours. He's a, he's an art teacher at a local uh, Long Island school out here as well. And, uh, He's the reason I know you guys. I, I was hoping that it was already finished artwork because I had a feeling that that was Zach's when I stole it. And I was like, I too wanted a piece of original Zach artwork. And it was just a blank. But he did have an awesome cover. It was a Captain Marvel yep. uh, book. I forgot. It's it's an iconic cover. I don't remember what it is. Um, I will find it out and we'll include that in the show notes as well. I like that idea of giving the blank cover, though. It is a good idea. It's almost like a gift certificate yeah. or something. <laughs> it's a good idea. I think it's hard to like be something to steal, though. Yeah. Like at the same point, it's like you want to see like that character, like oh, like right, I want right. that. It was like it, it, it was a cool idea, though, from him though, because I know he's he just bought a new house. Congratulations again, Zach. <laughs> so he he hasn't really had the time yeah, to, to do any. He was like, I'm sorry, like but I'll that. draw you something. <laughs> I almost made him do it on the spot. So and he then had, he had the Captain Marvel book too. That was his thing. Yes, that that was part Did of you that. End up, no, uh, no uh, Mike Carroll. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, yeah, Mike. And then Mike Carroll for the rest of the night ended up drawing like eight head sketches yeah. on yeah. the paper table with crayon. Yeah, with 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 many I, th- I think he felt bad that not everyone got art- artwork. So, so he, he drew just, something yeah. for like everybody. Yeah. I, I ended up getting a, I got the, a Spider-Man. You I got, got the, the Tom Velez uh, uh, Spider-Ham. Spider-Ham. That Spider-Ham. That was Peter Parker. Really cool which too. we'll Peter post. Parker. But yeah, it's... Yeah, uh, I, I posted it on the story, you? but I'll, uh, I'll include it. We'll do a post of all of those. It was and like... Then, it was nice. It was nice. It was nice to get them to, to do that on the table. Yeah, was I was a, trying to get it. So when I brought that sketchbook in, so that sketchbook that um, Jeff gave you that day, I had it yeah. in the tr- in the back seat of my car basically oh, okay. since that day. I was like, right. oh, maybe we'll have like each guy like do like a quick head sketch, and then oh, so what you also missed was, so I was like, oh, like just do a quick head sketch. I, I gave it to my cow first, and we'll get like all the artists in here, and like maybe we'll like do it, give it away as a raffle. So he had it, and he basically draws Jeff a full Wolverine <laughs> sketch, and I'm like. Okay. <laughs> right then and there? Did yeah. He, I did. didn't see that. Yeah, also a crown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to get Jeff. To, uh, Jeff's like, what? I don't have anything out of here. It's fine. <laughs> oh, you know what else we forgot? Um, Someone got a Mike Gaidos. Uh, Gaidos? Is it oh, Michael yeah. Gaidos? Sketch, uh, sketch uh, I think Tom Velez. Tom Velez. Tom Velez. Yeah. Yep. Um, for the guy who uh, co-created Jessica Jones. It was a, um, a Jessica Jones remark. So uh, that was pretty and, cool. And Tom said that was his first sketch he's ever had. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So <laughs> That's I guess, funny. I guess it worked out for everyone yeah i oh man i feel bad have we missed any gifts i think i think that was it that's everything most everything i'm pretty sure yeah i don't yeah i think that's everything but it was a good night uh yeah, if, if we miss anything we'll share it later ho- hopefully next year you know if we do this again we have crayons and paper out you know uh, <laughs> maybe some tom that's, Travers a, good, will, that's uh, a good i'll tell my wife to get a paper tablecloth there you go for the, the, for the and your table. basement just have canvases set up <laughs> yeah. I, I have plenty of blanks don't you worry i will fish those out i'll say oh yeah just here here you go yeah, just sit yeah, here leave <laughs> a few blank covers around yeah i never know what'll happen i think that'll be awesome invite some artists yeah. yeah it's like hey welcome to my house sit down and do some work <laughs> <laughs> get to work. That's awesome. So, um, should we get yeah, into our? Uh... I think that'll wrap that up for now. I apologize to anyone in our crew if we didn't talk about your gift. Uh, <laughs> we will, we will definitely do a full post on it and uh, include all the stuff that was won in our show notes. But I guess let's move on to our one-on-one interview where we were so lucky we booked we booked him six months in advance to get Tom <laughs> Travers here today. He came straight from work to be with us, and we appreciate you coming today, Tom. It's so awesome to be here. Awesome to be here. I'll just let you know for our first episode, our where we did the comic book origin story. I did credit you that for really? that idea. Yes. You know, we were at Billy Tucci's house, nice. and you're like, "Oh, so you guys should do like a comic book origin story." I was like, "That's actually a great name for what we should be doing." <laughs> so I think that's actually going to be you know what each guest we bring on, we'd like to do like you know first talk about your comic book origin yeah. story, and kind of like what we've done is you know it doesn't have to be like the first time you read a comic book okay. per se, but like something that your first experience with like geek culture, you know, yeah. may it be cartoons or right. you know. Right. 
you know, a movie you saw. So, you know, just take that and, uh, and go oh. with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess when I was a little, you know, when I was really little, um, I wasn't really aware of comics necessarily. Like, it, it was more Saturday morning cartoons and action figures. You know, like, that was my main thing for years. Um, you know, Thundercats, He-Man, yes. Silverhawks, uh, and, and movies, Star Wars, and everything. It was, it was about the movies, the shows, and then getting the action figures. That was my whole thing. Comics were around. I was aware of them, but I didn't really, like, have a collection or anything going. And I didn't read them, really. I would just look for awesome pictures, and that would just make me want to go get the action figure of that, <laughs> back, of that character. Respect. So, yeah, so I was all into the figures and stuff. Um, I got into comic book art really in, like, middle school. Um, I, I had been drawing... You know, ever since I was little, but started to take it more seriously in middle school, and um, I was going into comic shops looking for figures. I was still buying figures, but and and I noticed that the comic racks. I saw all this exciting, like incredible artwork, and started to pick up comics at that point. Like I saw Greg Capullo, Spawn stuff, and uh, Humberto Ramos on Crimson, and all. And I just started grabbing these books, and I got addicted to it. And um, you know, then I, then comics really became the number one thing that I was into. Um, just the comic book art and I just it was like a total uh, avalanche of discovering artists and, and then you know that led me to today I guess were there any guys that kind of like at that age specifically jumped off the page to you oh yeah like um, I, I guess it was like 1997 98 so it was like all of the the children of the image guys like not their literal children but like <laughs> the guys who were like you know following after the image boom of like Jim Lee and all those guys it was like the the next generation of younger guys like Joe Matarera and uh, J. Scott Campbell and um, Humberto Ramos who I already mentioned Greg Capullo all these guys were like really doing incredible explosive work at this time it was, it was really comics were still very much about the art like the exciting art and art still sold books, which is, you know, today it's not so much about that, but it was like every artist was trying to outdo the other. So, um, which is good for comic fans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which, which was just exactly, it was like the right place, right time for me. I just was absorbing that stuff like crazy. I loved it. But yeah, all those guys that I mentioned, I still love their work to this day, follow everything that they do. Um, yeah. So those were a couple of the guys right there Joe Med, J. Scott Campbell, Greg Capullo. <laughs> Uh, a huge list I could go on and on but loved all that stuff hmm. so what would you say like so how do you get into like really getting professional into the artwork and stuff like that you know what's your um, I guess how did you learn to draw and you know where, did you, did did you, you kind of just any schooling yeah did you yeah. kind of just start drawing uh, I mean like you know I drew I guess like most kids draw right when they're little kids yeah. so, you know everybody else oh, I have a draw my whole like so I, I drew as a little kid of course but then I got more serious about it in middle school started to look at all these artists and I was and you know the idea dawned on me that these guys were actual individual human beings that were <laughs> creating this artwork and they were doing it for a living no they're gods so, yeah so I started to because <laughs> like when you're a kid you see artwork you don't necessarily think like oh some guy created that you know you just think like, oh that's a cool picture yeah like that's awesome yeah, I, so. I was really OCD with not coloring yeah. outside the lines so got, <laughs> if I did that I'd just rip it out of the coloring book <laughs> So yeah, once I became aware of these artists and I started to take drawing more seriously because you know I would read interviews with these guys and they would talk about you know how important it was to draw from life and to you know study the principles of drawing like um, and not just make stuff up and you know uh, pull stuff out of your head all the time. You need to build your drawing chops and get uh, professional. So or take it more seriously. So that's when I started to do that and. Uh, I had great art teachers in high school, um, Mr. Sansone, who, uh, you know, definitely encouraged, he was one teacher who encouraged my drawing and uh, really pushed me to learn the fundamentals of drawing. And then um, probably the biggest turning point for me was in college when I took life drawing finally. Um, I took a life drawing class, which was just drawing from nude models, drawing from actual you know, a model, in, a model in front of you. Yeah. Um, and I learned a lot from doing that. And it kind of like, we're definitely you go to college by the way, uh, Fordham, Fordham, nice. Fordham. Yep. Went there, not an art school, but I studied, I did get my visual arts degree from there. So, nice. <laughs> but I yeah, took a bun bunch of the art classes at Lincoln center. And so it was, it was great, you know, and that, so mainly I'm self-taught overall, but I've taken classes and stuff like that too. And, and read books and, you know, so it's kind of been like a hybrid of, uh, 
just doing it and also pursuing the educational aspect of it as much as I can. Yeah. So, Tom, uh, your style of, of, of art, can you explain a little bit of that? Uh, yeah, it's, I guess, <laughs> yeah, it's always... <laughs> that sounded really bad, but whatever. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, I, I, guess, <laughs> I guess you would say, like, what would you attribute your, your kind style. of style? Yeah. <laughs> there um, you go. Yeah, it's always... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Jim. Come it's on, it's, you know, I'm trying. You know. <laughs> it's a good try. Um, Not Walter, Walter yeah, Conkright. <laughs> I mean... Who's that? <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, it's always, it's hard to, like, pin it down to just one quick, easy answer, so I'm going to drag, I'm going to drag it out and be... <laughs> Um, but, uh, I guess I'm really into gesture and energy in drawing. That's really what I'm interested in is like, uh, more of like an animated look an energetic look. Um, so that's, those are the styles that I'm drawn to. And that's what I've tried to incorporate into my own stuff. Um, over the years, that's what I'm always looking for, um, in the artists that I like, and I try to do it in my own stuff. Uh, so it's, it's like, uh, high energy animated you know, um, but also built on some realism. Um, like I try to have, I've tried over the years to build my knowledge of anatomy and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's some, you know, so, so it's built on a foundation of some reality as well. It's not just totally, um, out there with the mega cartooniness, but definitely animated, cartoony <laughs> I got you um, yeah like I I bend in that direction my you know my favorite artists are guys like Joe Matarera who I'll probably mention many times tonight because I just love his work um, uh, people who have a sense of kinetic energy in their drawing and that's what I try to do too and um, try to have a nice sense of texture and a little bit of grit in there and, and a nice like earthy hand made feel to things mm-hmm. too so um I don't know. It's it's hard to like put a general label on what the style is, but yeah, energy is that <laughs> is that how you started out drawing um, like that or yeah, like when you first started back. drawing, was it did you base it off of somebody else, another <laughs> artist, um, and then you grew into what how you how your art is now? Yeah, like great well, question, Jim. Yeah, yes. I'm trying. Very good. No, very make, good. make it up. I yeah, think absolutely. Good very very good. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, the artists that I first discovered. Like um, J. Scott Campbell and uh, Humberto Ramos, Ramos. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing the names. That's one other thing. I have trouble pronouncing a lot of the names of the artists I love because I always just read them in print and I sometimes don't know how to say them properly. I same problem. Um, I do yeah, the same thing. Yeah, so <laughs> if, I mis- if I mispronounce the names, I hope you can figure out who it is. But um, yeah, so I, was, I just saw the. I, I was looking at their styles and I was like, this is what I like. I, I actually made a conscious effort to never copy another artist directly which may have been a bad decision but I don't know Um, because you can learn a lot from copying other artists when you're a young artist and you want to copy like somebody's work from a comic and you're building your style right you can learn from that but I avoided that because I don't know I was just like Mm -hmm. I didn't like that idea I was like I don't want to copy other people's stuff I want to learn it on my own do my own thing develop my own style Um, so I didn't consciously copy anybody directly but I was certainly always thinking about the artists that I admired um, when I was doing my own drawing. So those art styles of all those guys at that time, Greg Capullo, all the guys I mentioned and many more, I was always absorbing that stuff and trying to get that same kind of energy and feel in my own stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so, so yeah, I guess before I discovered comics, my drawing was probably, you know, I was, it was, I was just a, a kid drawing just from my own, you know, like kind of childish drawings and stuff. But then when I discovered the comic book art, it brought more of a focus and a direction to go in. Um, so I did start to emulate that stuff in my own way. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So. so when someone asks you to draw a character that maybe you've never drawn before, right. how do you go about doing that? Um, do you base it off of um, other examples that you've seen like in... Yeah. Whatever I, from other artists? Or do you uh, kind of just... I just... I'll look up reference images quick just to make sure I get costume right and all that kind of stuff and um but you try and like create your own version of it so to speak yes yeah i always try to do my own uh version from the bottom up i just want to make yeah i'm pretty um i I like things to be accurate if if i'm drawing an established character i like it to be 
accurate to like the iconic classic version of that character unless somebody asks for something specific like a weird version of a certain character like a different costume from a different era or something so like so anything do, Jeff has ever asked right <laughs> <laughs> yeah like because uh, there are a lot of he characters to say that. characters that are that have so many different iterations like the costumes that they wear and stuff so um, you know that can get a little um, it, tough to I mean it, it's better when people are specific about what they want but um yeah, I try to just look at reference. I don't look at other people's... I, I would never try to, like, copy someone else's drawing of a character. I would never do that. That's just not um, what I would do. But you you look at reference images to get a sense of the character, get the costume right, get the feel for the character, and then you just... Kind of your own interpretation, Yeah, you do your right? own. You take those elements, the important elements that will make it look like the character and then you got to try to do your own spin. give your own style yeah you got to totally just do your own thing with it so that's what I try to do very cool to, yeah nice. that was a great yeah, um, that's a cool that's question a, that's a great um, answer to that question it's a, it is really I feel like for a lot of different artists kind of a like a weeded question really because mm-hmm. yeah. like at some point every every artist has like their way quote unquote that they draw Batman right, they draw right. Superman right but yeah, yeah I mean you look in any comic book and you know once you're reading comic books for a while like someone can bring up a picture and you're just like oh that's a Jim Lee Batman right. even if it's something yeah. that's never been published or anything yeah. like that like, yeah. you, you know what Jim Lee's Batman looks like you know what any girl J. Scott Campbell's ever right. drawn <laughs> yeah. looks like you know as soon as you see it kind of thing but um yeah so I, I know for anyone who's seen your artwork uh, there's definitely a big influence from you know the cartoons and uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> movies and stuff like that you want to talk about some of those that uh, uh that, yeah. that you've drawn and uh, <laughs> what, how those have inspired you yes yeah, so uh, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s. Um, so Me as well. The greatest time to be a kid. Uh, any, anybody can try to argue with me on that. But um, the, uh, all the stuff from that era has a huge impact on what I do now as an artist, for sure. Um, you know, the cartoons, uh, the action figure lines and all that kind of stuff. The movies, everything was just great. Like, um I think I already mentioned Thundercats, He-Man, all that kind of stuff. I have um, multiple He-Man pieces from you. Yes. <laughs> Love the He-Man stuff. Love the Dolph Lundgren He-Man film as well, Masters yeah, of the Universe. We're which, in the minority. Uh, yeah, we're in the okay. minority on that one, but <laughs> I love that movie. Um, so, yeah, all that stuff um, definitely, I mean, as far as the fan art that I do, because I do, I do fan art stuff as well, you know, the pieces that I make prints of and things like that at shows, I, I do a lot of properties from that era so you know that's one obvious way that all of that stuff influences me pretty directly um do you have a favorite that you like to draw um i love the ninja turtles love doing turtles stuff um teenage mutant ninja turtles that print Um, you put in the uh the yeah Uh, that that was awesome yeah, I think I, I asked you if, if you had the original artwork on that one for sale, have, yeah. and you're like, I'm not sure if I want to sell that. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, the turtle stuff I love. Um, just uh, the 80s and 90s turtle stuff. Like, uh, I just love that universe of the fun variety of crazy, wacky, gross, cool characters and stuff from the turtles universe and the, the movies, the cartoon, the toys from that time. To me, that's the peak of the turtle style. Oh, absolutely. You know, so. We were talking, I think, our first episode about how we feel like the 80s and 90s were like the martial arts um, era. And I yeah, feel like totally. the Ninja yeah. Turtles definitely were the ones who kind of pushed them in that yeah. direction. Yeah, totally. It was like a perfect, perfect storm for all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I love doing the Turtles stuff. Um, Thundercats, He-Man. I'll keep saying Thundercats and He-Man. Also, <laughs> Thundercats original artwork from Tom. Yeah, just, <laughs> just the character designs are so fun from that era like just every show and every toy line had such variety that i just think that a lot of stuff doesn't have that anymore like i I don't know maybe i'm like an old curmudgeon or something no well now you're right everyone feels that way (laughs) yeah you're right yeah like just especially yeah like if you go down a toy aisle now it's kind of like there's like five or six established brands like it's like power rangers transformers and like that's it it's like, Star Wars yeah, stuff, yeah it's like a it's, couple of superheroes it's things, limited yeah. and then like i feel like in the 80s there was like an explosion of crazy variety of like all these crazy i, wish I grew up during them yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the younger guy here uh-huh. but, that um, is <laughs> ats <laughs> no i'm ts <laughs> 
So so compared to like the 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 the, the He Man or like Thundercats, for example, yeah. the thing from from the eighties to right. now, you've seen the the new, oh, the new Thundercats, yeah, yeah, and the way that's drawn. I mean, right, right. thoughts on that? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, <sighs> He's, huge, try, he's huge. trying not to say it <laughs> in a nice way. If, you, if you're referring to Thundercats Roar, which is the latest incarnation of Thundercats, um, I would have to give that a big double thumbs down. <laughs> um, <laughs> the art style is just, I don't know, it's just horrible. To me, the 80s stuff doesn't need improving upon. And, and the just the, the design sensibilities and the, the artwork in the 80s were just so awesome. Um, and I think they still hold up if you look at it. The stuff just looks great. Um, and the the new style is just kind of like, I don't know. I agree with you. I, I don't know why yeah. they keep doing it because yeah. that she was out, what, it was just horrible. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's better than the Thundercats Roar. But, I mean, literally when I saw that advertisement for um, Thundercats Roar, I was going back and looking at the original. And then I, was, I actually looked at probably like five or six other cartoons yeah. from like the 80s and stuff like that. I was like... How is it that the artwork has gotten worse? It has definitely mm-hmm. devolved. I was like, I was yeah. like you know, <laughs> like, this was like high quality artwork. Yeah. You know, it looked great. It looked realistic, and now right. like you know, everything looks like Teen Titans Go. Yeah, which uh, I mean, I think it's you know the people who like to who get the munchies and stuff like that. Like, yeah, to watch this stuff. Yeah. I watched way too much of that yeah. show. Yeah. That one day in uh, <laughs> Baltimore. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I will have Gosh, to say, though, Tom Pilar. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to say though, what improved was what I, I like to some degree. Old Voltron to the new Voltron. Oh, the new Defenders. Voltron is excellent. I mean, it, it, yeah, it looks. There are exceptions, oh, right? Right, right. Yeah. and that looks. Yeah, like, like I wish. I wish they weren't serious with the art concept. Right, on right, that, right. Yeah. That's it like, wasn't like they're trying to like make a true. mockery of themselves. Right, that's what bothers me about the new versions is like when they they turn it into something that is just totally not. It's it doesn't fit the vibe of the original at all. And like Voltron is great because it it's it's like an improvement in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, and it's it's respectful of the original. And does something new, and I wish the Thundercats stuff would do that. Like if they did a Netflix Thundercats in the style of Voltron, I oh, think that would be that would be cool. That I would be into. Would but you, Thundercats roar now. Would you be in uh, the theater for uh, Master of the Universe Thundercats live action movie again? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it depends on the casting. Right. It depends on the. Uh, I, I'd be pretty touchy about it. It would have to be. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't matter who's in this. <laughs> I'm going to be there with my my sort of omen, yeah, sort, sort mean, of power. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it looks awesome, I would I would definitely be excited about it. But I've noticed a lot of your uh, work too is like on the monster um, side of things. Too. Yeah, like, I've seen you. You yeah. did awesome Godzilla. That Godzilla yeah. was insane. Yeah, I love monsters and gross cool stuff. like i love mad balls i don't know if you know the toys oh yeah oh, balls, yes yes gross stuff i, I love the universal this, monster yeah. it's like the, I, that's another whole angle of my stuff that i i like to go into is like the monsters and um just gnarly gross detailed fun creepy stuff uh <laughs> you know influence like I'm trying to think of artists that have influenced me james groman is the guy he's a he's a designer um who did most of the mad balls uh, design work and I love his stuff and his whole sensibilities with that. but yeah but monster I mean monsters are just super fun to draw so um, I saw um, can't go wrong with monsters I don't know if you know uh, I, I mean you probably know him because he, he, he got the word from you but Cliff from uh, Lost for Toys yes. you did an awesome uh, clay face, clay face. Yeah. so you post that uh, yeah. I forgot what show that was for was uh, it, uh, that was Eternal Con Eternal, yeah, yeah that, Eternal that was Con. really cool yeah yeah, I have fun with that stuff. That's you know, if you want to commission me, commission a big gnarly, screaming monster, and that it'll probably be cool. <laughs> so it, it's funny. So the way I actually met Tom is uh, me and uh, other Tom Pilari. So there's three Toms in our group. He's Tom Travers. We have Tom Pilari, Tom Velez. Uh, me and Tom Pilari were at a cigar shop, and we were talking about comics. And uh, you were there with another friend. And yeah, my he's friend like, John he's like, he's like, Oh no, he's like, I, someone's talking about comics. Yeah. Like, like, I, I, I hear a friend, so you know we yeah. just started chatting, and I don't think we uh, we ran into each other after that for a while. But I started following. I, I the only reason I was usually using social media was to follow comic book related stuff. Yeah, and I think I reached out to you. I was like, you know, what? I, I like I, I saw the work you're putting out. So it's like I got to get Master Universe stuff. In there. <laughs> like your Master Universe stuff was just so cool, and I got this massive piece. I, I think I've posted it. I have to post it again though, of like that huge scene that. You oh did. yeah, that I was, was probably awesome. like a pain that in the was... butt with the going back and forth on that. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you were. A little yeah. bit. I was like, I, I, I want I want He Man to be like this. <laughs> and it was just like that was a it was, super fun commission yeah you so. did, you, that was just an amazing uh, piece of work you did um, but what are kind of like the current projects that you're working on right now I know you have um, um, your 
your your right. character that you're trying to get out there. I have yeah. one of the first uh, appearances of him, yes. so I'm Hang really I'm really banking for him to be big, Tom. <laughs> Hang on to that. Uh, what, what was his name again? Uh, Battle Skull. Awesome. Battle Skull is my little creation, um, and I've been trying to get the comic book together for a long time. Uh, I don't know why it's taken me so long, but I, I think I've, you have a story idea. I have the story all written out, and okay. I've done. Uh, you know, I did the short story, which is the book that Tess is talking about. Uh, myself published that, like extremely small print run. So yeah, hang on to that. That could be. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing the fifth sign right too. Now, I by think. the way, guys, <laughs> I got one of those too. I think. Yeah, I think yeah, you I got one of those a while yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, so I've been trying to get that together. Battle Skull is just like totally an uh, amalgamation of all the stuff that I've been talking about this whole time. All the stuff that I love. You know, the uh, Masters of the Universe. Thundercats and the know. artwork on that is great. Like, even you, though, even you. your short story, it's 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 really cool the, the way that you kind of interpret that and you know your style. Thank you. And uh, you you actually were kind enough to share with us some of the other artists that you actually had to do like their interpretation yes, yeah. of Battle Skulls, like maybe yeah. variant covers. Yeah, maybe trying one day to, in the I've, future. Yeah, I've commissioned a bunch That's a very of artists. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. Commissioned a bunch of guys to do battle, their renditions of Battle Skull, and, and I will use them as pinups and whatever else in future <laughs> issues when I finally finish the darn thing. I mean, that was good <laughs> foresight just to even think of doing that. Like, even I if I was like an artist, I feel like I would have <laughs> never thought to do that. It's the one uh, smart thing maybe I've done. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's. Uh, I just. I gotta make the time for it. It's just. I, I keep uh, trying to find the right art style to do it in. That's the problem too. I've like I've started it in one look, and then I'm like, ah, maybe I want to do this, and I'm not sure if I want to do it in black and white or maybe do hand coloring for the whole thing. That's probably too overly ambitious, but um, you go all Walking Dead and do it black and white. Yeah, black and white is probably quicker and more economical, so I should probably do that. But um, yeah, I just had a hard time like getting it together, but it's happening. I think this summer I will probably be able to publish. Um, full color version of the book that you have I I, I got those pages colored by a digital colorist Um, so I'm doing like a big color special uh, version of that which is going to have some of those pinups too from other artists and stuff so that's going to be like a special publication that I'm trying I'm working with my friend right now he's a graphic designer he's assembling it for me so hopefully we'll have that together and I'll, I'll have it at shows this summer I'm shooting for so awesome how is uh how does it go cost wise like for digital coloring is it, is it uh, tough to get like a whole book done on your own yeah I mean if if you're paying a colorist it can get expensive if the guy is good if the person is good um you know it's not overly it's not crazy but you know you're talking could be 50 to 60 bucks a page and if oh, you're wow. doing a 22 page book adds up that's hefty yeah. especially that's, if you're tough. just self-publishing and you don't have any audience like yeah. you know I, i'm not these books are never i mean right now they're not gonna be profitable i hope they would be profitable someday but you know that's not really why i'm doing it but so you got to drop a little bit of money, hmm. but it's worth it. Got to I mean, spend money to make money. Yeah, mm-hmm. and when I get the work back, it's so it's very satisfying. It's very fun to just to I, see that, right? Yeah, it's awesome. It's like you know, because it's something I can't do. It's a look that I can't do on my own. I don't do the digital stuff. I do traditional hand coloring. So it's cool to kind of outsource that, and um, you get something totally unique back and it's it puts a different spin on what i do so i'm excited to get that stuff out there for people to check it out but so that'll be cool. happening soon awesome <laughs> Very excited. so any upcoming uh, shows that people could find you at um i don't have anything in me- scheduled immediately I, i'll probably be doing a lot of the same shows that i usually do every year like um eternal con i try to do a, a lot of local stuff like on long island i do eternal con cradle con which um, is the new show at the Cradle of Aviation, which was really good. I don't know. Did you guys? You guys went to yeah, good show. Yeah, good that show. Was cool. So I'll be doing that our, again. Uh, our friend Jimbo Slice. We uh, yes. we did that together. Yep. This past. Oh summer. yeah, 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 yeah. It's all coming back to me now. Yeah. <laughs> the, you know, I, we we all saw each other there. Um, yeah. So Cradle. Um, trying to think what else. Actually, my brother sells video games, so... All right, we met him one time. Yeah. <laughs> so I he actually does, bought that uh, yeah. NES uh, system so it's a, from him. <laughs> uh, another show at Cradle of Aviation, the retro gaming show, where they sell games. Like, we split a table last summer, which was great. So he sells his games, and I was selling some artwork, and it was cool. So I'll probably do that again. And Very cool. Uh, other than that, nothing major. Maybe Heroes Con, so we can coordinate a trip. Oh, down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that is our... Make some money off the trip. Yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. The Long Island Comic Guys, uh, big uh, comic show this year is Heroes Con, hopefully. Yeah, that's a great show. So if I get a table there, maybe that'll be my first long-distance show. There you go. Yeah, farthest I've gone is Jersey, really, mm. other than Long Island. So I don't really travel too much for shows, but I love doing shows. So I should add a few more to the to the roster eventually, but... 
Very good. So this is probably in like kind of the same realm. Do you have any like goals, short term, long term, right now in terms of art and comics uh, or anything else? Yeah, my main goal personally is Battle Skull. I really want to get that done, publish it, and um, just have that to shop around at shows and uh, you know get people to check that out. That's my first major creative goal is to commit to that and finally see it through <laughs> Very because cool. uh, I've been talking to people about it for years it's like my you know and I just I really got to get that done um, other than that I'm just trying to always improve my artwork too um, like I see these guys like Crease I, I see his work and I'm like oh man this guy's <laughs> like so good <laughs> his inks are so good I'm like I need to learn more of this stuff and uh, you know focus on those things so I'm, I've been trying to improve my techniques and just you know study by studying art studying other people's art and uh you know wherever i can pick pointers up and stuff so i'd love to actually see your style like in those like kind of traditional inks i think it would actually look pretty awesome yeah, yeah. i hope so i'm going to try some things I'm, I'm messing with some stuff now so there should be some new new actually for the for the grab bag thing that we did the yankee swap i was working on a piece i was trying to do it in like a new style but i said i should go with like <laughs> so there, there were there was some stuff really cool. in progress you know we're a good group for you to try out new stuff <laughs> yeah. yeah anytime you want to try something new out you just want us to have yeah. it we're here for if, you. If you, if you, we'll take it on. I may need, I may if need you your want to throw it in the garbage. Just, <laughs> just throw it towards our garbage and don't yeah. crease it too much. Yeah. <laughs> Sign Put, everything you create. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I'm trying to just improve and change things up all the time, and that's it. All right. So before we go to our beat a geek segment, do you just want oh, to boy. give us your um, kind of like best ways to get in contact with you? If people oh, want yeah. to get artwork, maybe want to, you know, want you to work with them on their comic book or something. You yeah, know? we always push your name out. I mean, I feel part yeah, of you guys like, are like, you know, awesome with people promoting. who um, people we think are good. And, you know, if people who are our friends, you know, you know, I mean, we would always be honest and like you know, with the talent level. Like, you know, I give you crap about, you know, drawing women. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. But, That's um, another, yeah. Yeah, another thing yeah. I need to improve. <laughs> Wait, yeah. wait a minute I have one of those I <laughs> Jim I know <laughs> I actually I like my poison ivy right, I'm yeah, a fan yeah. of my poison no, ivy I, I thought that was great there are elements of it that need work for, for but, someone who you know. doesn't draw you know females a lot yeah I think it know. was really I think yeah. that was a really great um, great piece ah, thank you I, yeah, I gotta improve that aspect I fully admit to that you know but uh, so how can people get in touch with Tom uh, can reach me um, I'm on Instagram at Tom Travers Art um, that's probably I'm, I'm on there pretty often check the messages regularly and stuff that's a great way to get in touch with me and check the gallery out if you're interested in seeing stuff um, so Instagram's good you have uh, some Facebook groups too right I have a Battle Skull Facebook group which nice. uh, has not been updated in a while but I do update it once in a blue moon I am um, not part of that Facebook group I'm have to join <laughs> yeah I, I should have some fresh stuff in there soon but uh, awesome. so that's facebook.com backslash Battle Skull um, those are probably the two best ways. Uh, you could email me too. Uh, should I say my email over the air? Is that like, <laughs> no, yeah, if, if you're comfortable, sure. yeah, 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 sure. I mean, we'll link you, everything if, in the, yeah, if, anybody, gonna, yeah, you you can, if you're interested too. in commissions or anything like that, just, uh, travers.tj at, uh, gmail.com. So awesome. Jim, Jim just li- literally joined that. Nice. Right I, now. I had no idea that there was a battle. School yeah. I, I haven't promoted it much cause as I've stated, battle school has been kind of slow, a slow go. So, um, but I will be, uh, pumping out some battle school stuff nice. nice there'll be updates there'll be some cool stuff very cool <laughs> it's cool stuff brewing all right awesome all right so i guess we'll uh we'll get into the the quiz question we're doing the quiz oh my yeah. god oh yeah right, i'm excited i'm scared you're much older <laughs> than me you know a lot more <laughs> all right tom so how beat a geek works is i ask each of you a question i'll start with you because you're our guest you have the advantage okay if you get that question right i ask matt a different question. Okay. If you get that question wrong, I ask Matt the same question. Okay, right, cool. If you both get it wrong, no points are given. Okay. We're going to have 10 questions. Whoever right. get the most questions right wins the, the game. Nice. If we have a tie at the end, we're going to do a rapid fire round. So All I'm right. going to ask a question. Sudden Whoever death. answers it correctly. <laughs> First gets the uh, gets you look the nervous. Here. Fantastic! I'm, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, so Tom, your first question. Oh boy, he's covering the paper. <laughs> I, I'm not secretly. I'm not comfortable with where Matt's sitting right now. Which Masters of, U- of the Universe toy line character never appeared in the original filmation series? Wow, oh, that's unfair. A. Faker. Oh, it's multiple choice. Thank God. B. Stinkor. C. Mossman. Or D, buzz off. 
Never appeared in the Filmation Animated show. series, yeah. Wait, what was Troy say? It was Faker. Faker. Stinkor. Mossman. Buzz Off. I thought this was, was going to be a, a softball. Uh, to be you. honest, no, I'm not. A, I'm not a big. I don't watch the filmation. I was more into the fig, action figures as a kid. To be All honest, right. so I'm not. I'm not a big filmation buff. But I'm trying to think to the. The Masters of the Universe classics line, which has been they re, they've been remaking all of the filmation figures. So I'm trying to think which ones they haven't done. <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> I'm gonna go with um. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> well, leave me the last choice one more time. Uh, buzz off. I'm gonna go with buzz off. All right, is that your final answer? Yes. All right. I'm sorry, you're incorrect. <laughs> so Matt has a little bit of an advantage right. here on a yeah, multiple so now you get one eliminated. So Wait, what are the three choices? Matt, so he was incorrect on Buzz Off. So your remaining question, uh, your remaining options are Faker, Stinkor, Moss Man. <laughs> I'm going to go Faker. You are incorrect uh, as well. The correct answer Faker. was Stinkor. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, wow. Never, Never, <laughs> Stinkor never appeared in the light. So, wow. fun fact about that: I looked into it. It's like when they brought names into who was going to be in future episodes, everyone in the room laughed when they had. To. <laughs> so, Stinkor was actually a real character oh that goodness. he had some type of spray, right. or he right. had like he smelled of something. He's like yeah. he's basically just a mold of uh, Merman yeah, that they yeah. redid, and they're like, "No, we're not ever going to have him." <laughs> oh, man. I love the Stinkor figure. Yeah, so, but so I, I'm not surprised you knew the figure. Though. Yes. All right, so we're we're going to ask you your next question. So this goes to me or Matt? It at goes this point. to you because okay. we both, so we both so yeah, we both sucked at that one. This is this one's a little bit of a tough one. Uh, we'll see. And the last I, one I feel like you might get it though. What Top Cow production ca- uh, Top Cow Productions character was co-created by Michael Turner? <sighs> um, co-created Witchblade. Correct. Ooh, right. nice. <laughs> All right, Matt, now your question. Ooh, this is a good one for you. In Star Wars, what type of farmers were Luke and his aunt and uncle? Uh, moisture farmers. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> now, just, now, just to let you know that that question might not have fell to you if he got the initial one right. Uh, right. <laughs> All right, Tom. Your next question. I feel like this one's Bring in your on. real house. All right. Beautiful. In TMNT, the original cartoon series. Nice. Who creates the Mousers? Um, it's not multiple choice. It is not uh, multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because um, I have a few ideas. Okay. I'm guessing Baxter Stockman. Correct. All right. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Great character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Matt. I don't know how much confidence I have in you in this, but we'll see. Wow. Okay. Robert Wool portrays this character in the 1989 Batman film, a character who does not in- exist in comic continuity. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. wow. Hold on. It's never made a comic book experience? I will, I will clarify <laughs> so after <TV>? Matt's <laughs> a- answer. Okay. Character that has never made that has never made a comic book appearance. Comic book continuity appearance. Con- Oof. <sighs> wow. Have you ever seen the nineteen eighty nine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was he alive? No, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I was not alive. I believe that, that was six BTS. <laughs> six BTS. Yeah, yeah. BTS. I've seen them. I've seen. Them. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know this one either. Oh. All right, I'm gonna have to go to Tom go. on this one. I'm gonna take a shot. In All the right, dark. Tom, I'll, I'll repeat it for you. Robert Wool portrays this character in the 1989 Batman film, a character who does not exist in comic continuity. <sighs> Robert, well, I wish I knew. I just don't know. I can't picture the actor, so I don't know which character yeah. it is, but maybe... Um, Bullock or something? No, there's no Bullock in that, unfortunately. <sighs> so the character, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the show Arliss. That was who Robert Wool was. He was Alexander Knox. 
Alexander Knox. He was the reporter who kind of like. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh okay. Mm-hmm. So Vicky Vale yeah, partner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. the reason I said comic book continuity is because apparently they made a movie adaptation in 1989. Okay, yeah, yeah. I own that actually. That yeah. Movie. yeah so. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Still pretty close here. Ah, Two to one. Good. Matt, this is your chance for redemption. <laughs> Which character is Stan Lee not credited with co-creating? This is multiple choice, so hold on. A, Thor. B, Doctor Strange. C, Luke Cage. Or D, Black Panther. Hmm. I'm going to go Luke Cage. That is correct. Oh, nice. Guys are tied up at two. So, I'll have you know, I thought he wasn't involved with... um, Black Panther originally. That was my I next guess. It was still pretty early in yeah. the uh, in the production process of uh, Fantastic Four, so he was still pretty involved. And he wasn't in that. Was he? Did he do a cameo in that in Black Panther? I'm sure he must have. I don't remember Ooh. seeing Stanley. Stanley. Movie. He didn't. I think he did actually. He must have. I don't yeah. remember what it was. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. We'll, we'll have to go back to the notes on that. But all right, Tom, your all next right. question. Bring it on. <laughs> What actor was originally cast to play Indiana Jones? Oh, my God. Ooh. I think I've heard this in this the past, but now, of course. Do I, you know this, Jim? I do. <sighs> I, I, I need the multiple choice question. <laughs> Unfortunately, this one is uh, not, multiple, is not choice. multiple choice. All right, who was originally almost cast to be Indiana Jones? Uh <sighs> trying to think i guess i could just take a shot uh tom cruise <laughs> <laughs> a little late jim <laughs> hey it's all right um ridiculous that, i'm sorry that was incorrect <laughs> did you say tom cruise you did yes. say tom cruise <laughs> total right. shot all right matt about. same question for you what no actor idea. was originally like classed to play indiana jones i feel like i knew this yeah i feel like i've heard it in the past and when you say it i'm gonna say oh yeah I have an idea. But I feel like it's someone Spielberg worked with early on. I'll be honest with you. Both no Spielberg <laughs> and um, George Lucas wanted this person to play originally. I know Ford wasn't the first choice. I don't remember who. I don't know. You were pretty close with the Tom. It was Tom Selleck. Yep. Wow. Yep. So okay. what happened was I didn't know he, that. Yep. he did an, an awesome uh, screen test, and I actually literally watched it when I was coming up with these questions. With um, Who's that woman, Young, that you just got her autograph? Um, a couple oh, years Sean, ago. Young. Sean Young. Sean Young. Mm-hmm. So they had, a, they had a great thing, and... Um, that actually, Ford was their first choice, but George Lucas is like, oh, he's been in so many of my films. I don't want him to be like my Robert De Niro, referring to like how oh, okay, Martin okay. Scorsese is like, like Robert De Niro's Martin Scorsese's guy. So um, they went with him, and he couldn't get out of his. He had just signed his contract for Magnum PI, and he couldn't get out of it. Wow. So they had to go so with we could have a Tom Selleck. Wow. Well, I mean, he he did have a pretty good test. I mean, it wouldn't have been this. It, it wouldn't have been Indiana Jones as we know it today. Yeah. but it might have been a good film. <laughs> Interesting. Think All about right. that one. <laughs> yeah. My Tom Cruise guess was horrible. <laughs> That's funny. He was, a, he was a little too young. A little too young at the time. All right. Let's see our next question here. All right. This one might be a little tough for you. How many sides does the signature die of D&D have? <sighs> Ooh. You guys have shown me them. <laughs> I'm trying. We have. Yes, I've seen them. I'm trying to figure out how many sides. Eight? That is incorrect. I don't know which one's the signature die. Your question, your question, Matt. How many sides does the signature die? It's considered the signature die. I'm going to go 20. D&D Sacro. You're correct. That wow. is correct. Yeah. I didn't know that at all. Well, you look at any, any of their logos, it's always a 20 it's sided a, die. Uh, they, they, they not a D&D as D&D person. D20. I, that's why I was, yeah. I, I was worried. That, Good question. Uh, yeah, that question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So this one might be a little tough. Too. Okay. Let's see. I'm getting destroyed. Now famous for her leading and supporting roles in films such as Hunger Games, Role Models, and 40-Year-Old Virgin, what actress portrayed Betty Brant in all three Tobey Maguire starring Spider-Man films? What? Uh, (laughs) Betty Brant? Hey, they increase in difficulty level. Tobey Maguire, Spidey movies, and she's in Hunger Games? 
Uh, she was in. I'm not saying she started in Hunger Games. But she was. A, she was in Hunger, she's Games, in Hunger Games. Role models and forty year old virgin. Role models and forty year old virgin. Her biggest role was probably in role in role models. Role models. Not overall the biggest role out of the three movies I mentioned. God, I saw forty year old virgin once in college, like years and years ago. <laughs> I can't. None of those movies I'm really familiar with. Um, I don't even have a guess. I really, I gotta just pass on that one. I also have uh, no guess. No guess. <laughs> you have any clue? I uh, no clue. I'm trying to think of all three, all those movies. It's uh, it's Elizabeth Banks. Is her Elizabeth name. Banks. Yeah, if you see her face, if I saw her picture. I'd, yeah, you, yeah. You, you you know who she was. Really? Right away. Yeah. <laughs> she, and and I thought she was only in the first two. When I researched it, she was actually in all three. Because huh, wow. I didn't want to mistakenly say she was in the first two films, so I I saw that she Interesting. was in all three. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Oh, I know her. Of yeah. course. Yeah, she does like those Realtor.com commercials now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. All right. So you were the last one to get one wrong. All right. This is the last question. This This one's pretty. pretty If you thought that one was tough, this one's (coughs) a little tougher. All right. (laughs) What is the first comic book appearance of Howard the Duck? Oh, Oh, I know this. (sighs) I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh, I have this book. (laughs) I have this book. Hold on, Jim. Matt, what is the first comic book appearance? Adventure into Fear 19. That is correct. Wow. Yes. Good job. Wow. I only know that because. Kudos. <laughs> so that was a four to two win for me. Yes. Matt. Wow, I yeah. did not expect that. Young Gun destroyed me. <laughs> the, the geeks remain unscathed. <laughs> Good job. Ooh. That was fun. Wow, yeah. it's. Uh, I, I feel like it, I don't know if we'll do that every um, every episode, but it's a it's a fun little thing. Very it might cool. be every yeah. interview uh, episode. Th- this was that. much tougher than the last one we did. Yeah, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll do full disclosure here. Uh, we had some technical <laughs> difficulties <laughs> with our IT guy Jim here. Oh, uh, we recorded him and his wife's um, battle twice. And uh, neither one <laughs> survived, oh <my> apparently. <laughs> so the first time, it wasn't plugged in. The recording device wasn't plugged in. The second time, Jim somehow, I don't know, was it corrupted? I don't know. <laughs> but um, I guess before we kind of sign off today, we wanted to talk about one last thing, kind of like Jim alluded to it earlier, his kind of his experience at WinterCon, getting his uh, his poster signed. Uh, who was the guy again? That signed so Colin Cantworth. Um, Special effects on Star Wars. Special right? effects. He, um, you know, he's known for the the modeling of coming up with the idea of um, the Death Star. The so for anyone who X-Wing. doesn't know, after they finished filming Star Wars, they did post production for like two years, right? Yes. Of all the modeling and the scenes, anything, any space battles. Yep. Yeah. They all built that stuff and put like fireworks in them to make them yep. explode. He was uh, he, he was telling me a story um, w- that you know with the Death Star. It was a pretty cool story with the Death Star. Was when they so it was too big like. Uh, Half sphere, sphere of that they glued together, and there was this seam across the end of it. And they, Lucas hated the se- the seam that was that was created. So, Colin put this trench in the middle of it just to hide it, and they all loved it. So and that's why the trench. trench. That is why the trench is there. Wow! So it was a pretty cool story. Oh, that's cool. Um, just because he was OCD. He was, I, yeah, I respect yeah. that. Yeah. I respect yeah. that, George Lucas. <laughs> so um, George Lucas is going to listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. Um, so you know, reason why you know I brought him up uh, in the very beginning is, um, you know, I. I have this Star Wars post that I've been working on, um, you know, getting him to sign this, this guy, Colin, to sign this, you know. Um, it's an original guy who worked on the movie. He's original. So he's he's come up in age. Um, so, you know, you got a lot of these actors, and not even actors, but even some of these uh, comic book legends that we have, they're coming up to, you know, uh, a, 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 an age where an age of, of, their lives. of you know they may then they may not be with it you know in the head so you know when I was getting my my poster signed by this guy Colin um, you know it, it only took a split second for me to turn my head and look in a different direction and he started signing in a place where I didn't want him to sign mm-hmm. and as he was signing the, the the letters were huge you know up across my poster and I just I just ended up stopping him before he started signing over another signature, and I kind of went a little crazy. Um, you know, <laughs> thankfully, thank you. some choice words were said. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's unfortunate, but I, you know, I got him to stop, and he ended up signing up the rest of his signature last name um, underneath it. But you know, it comes into a, you know, a play of like you know, 
how old do you need to, to, to stop what you're doing? Um, something told me I should have been more paying attention because, you know, there was a guy behind me getting uh, who was buying a um, an autograph with already pictures that he had on the table. So a lot of these actors and actresses, they already have pictures on the table that they'll sign. The problem with this guy is all his pictures on the table, they were already pre-signed. So you were buying an autograph from him that was already signed by him. God Maybe, knows how long ago. But who knows how long ago, even if it was his. So he wasn't doing the live signatures there, only on stuff that people brought, like me. I brought my poster. So my signature doesn't look anything like his other signatures. Yeah, but, it probably wasn't even him, you know, right? <laughs> it, we got to ask the question is, you know, should some of these guys stop signing? I understand it's a big money it's grab. Like, it's a big, you know, um, money push for, for these guys to, to make. And it's, it's a lot of money. You know, uh, you're spending 50 bucks for a signature. He's not, you know, some of these people are not with it. You know, they're getting help from their handlers. I mean, some of these handlers are, you know, taking a cut of this. And, and that's the thing, you know, I mean, that was a big question about Stan Lee. Like, you know, how did Stan Lee really need the money or was it everyone else who, you know, who was dragging him to these things that really needed the money out of it? And it's, you know. It, like there's videos shame. online of his handler telling him how to spell his name. Yeah, yeah he's I've, I've heard crazy, that. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, should somebody be telling these guys to stop? <laughs> I mean, it's no. you know, it's a question because like, even that other guy, that the guy who was um, the voice of um, Admiral Akbar, you know, we went to go see him. He was oh, like ninety-two man. years he old, and right. I don't even think he made it to the next year. He didn't. And he was point. another one where the handler had to tell him how to spell his own name. Yeah, and it was. I felt bad for the guy. Like I was happy to get his signature. I was happy to give him money, but again, this guy, I, I don't think he knew where he was at. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's sad. sad. Yeah, it yeah. really is. It does come across as like sometimes it might be the handlers taking advantage of these people, which oh, is yeah. not, not good. Uh, yeah, I'm sure in the, uh, this probably <coughs> unique situation in almost all of them, like some guys really might need the money. Like that guy Colin is just like, I mean, I don't know if he does a lot of work still or, you know, you, you don't know these people's personal situations of whether they need it or, or not. But, I mean, you know, at some point, you know, there's got to be another way to do this. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's, it's almost kind of like – what we discussed last time you know you have to have a little bit of respect for the industry you know you have to have like respect for these people it's like you know kind of like dragging them around i think like, maybe it should be like a mail-in thing or something like that it's like you know like 10 you know send in 10 bucks and you know you'll get your piece on but the, then you have that question like did the guy really sign it too it's just, yeah. and you have and like especially with your poster like you probably wouldn't do that for you know this guy specifically i mean you know um Harrison Ford's a special case situation where you've never actually let go of the poster before. I mean, we've discussed never. this. I mean, we've probably had separate discussions about, you know, back and forth about whether we should, whether you should even do the Harrison Ford <laughs> thing. Even sign it I've been it's saying yes like, since the get-go. I mean, yeah, I think we've all said yes just because, you know, you have to have the big three on the poster. Like, Absolutely. Like, you Absolutely. Know, it's like, I, I mean, I would, if I was in your shoes, I would probably do the same thing. You know, my wife would probably make me sleep on the couch for about six months. <laughs> but, I mean, I still wouldn't regret it. <laughs> Um, have you uh, and you guys go going in, in Tom like going to the, the shows and all that? Um, do you see even you know c- cartoonists or the artists, you know, uh, some of the older guys being there? Yeah, yeah, you definitely see guys who are pretty old. They're legends. You know, Who's that guy you got a um, something from? Alan Bellman. Alan Bellman. Yeah, He's I, mean, I see guy. him that, so much. That He's such guy's nice still guy. like a firecracker, though. I mean, like you know, <laughs> him and his wife kind of work it together. He's I a mean, golden age artist. He's probably right? like he, He's the oldest living um, Captain America. Is that the Captain artist. America guy who yeah, puts the I, earrings in the yeah, ear? <laughs> he, he put an earring on my Captain America. <laughs> I mean, sweet guy. I mean, like I again though, like you know, I mean for for his nineties, him and his wife are you know I would I would love to be as well you know with it as they were. Still doing even shows at, and like themselves. Even at it though, you know, the guy was still, you know, he'd ask me a lot of follow up questions and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I respect that. You know, he wants to make sure he's doing the right thing. But it's like, I, I mean, I hope I, the problem was those the guys like that, they didn't really make the money like the guys are right, now, yeah. too. So, like, he probably does need to be there. You know, Joe Sonat, like, who I've, I was lucky enough to get that amazing Thunder uh, uh, Thor um, head sketch from, you know, he's another, another guy who's like, you know, he's pretty old. He's like yeah. a. These guys were all rage. They were all freelancers, so they don't have pensions. Right. Yeah. Them. They don't have cover. You know, yeah, you're right. Not. I didn't even think of that. So they worked all these years, and uh, you know, a lot of them do have a tough financial situation as they get older. And they they created, I think, the Heroes Con, Heroes Con. Actually, yeah. the mm-hmm. all the, like a lot of the money from Heroes Con goes to uh, I think a general fund for comic industry veterans. Yeah. Really? Which, yeah. Which is really great. That's great. Wow. Oh, I didn't know that because a lot, yeah, a lot of these guys who. That makes sense, though. I didn't think yeah. that that would even be the they case. They were part of creating all these characters that are making all this money now in movies and stuff, but they don't 
get to see a lot of that, you know, because they're they were yeah, just, I, it, it was all owned by the companies. They would draw the pages, and it's right. it was, I randomly see like a name up there. Like I might have seen Joe Sinat's name up in like End of Avengers or some movies like that. But like to me, like to get something from one of those guys is way even more meaningful than like yeah, the guys awesome. today. Like you know, listen, like Jim Lee, J. Scott Campbell, their artwork's amazing. I'd love to have it, but like right. to meet these guys, like you know, they were there when these characters were becoming big and you know like they when they were creating some of them yeah so yeah. like I mean like to have an original piece of artwork from one of those guys means more to me than anything like I said earlier you know I got that art from Joe Gaella you know I wound up being friends with his handler and I feel like him and his name's Jeff I'm not sure what his last name is but you know he was a good guy you know he appreciated that I was a fan of it he knew like I think he kind of was like getting feeling me out to see if like I was into this or if I just wanted to get it and flip it kind of thing yeah. and I talked to him and like you know I, I ran up to him in New York Comic Con I was like hey you know we spoke a while back because Joe Gala did an appearance at best and um, he's like he liked my like flash shirt or whatever I was like yeah I was like you know I'd love an original piece of artwork from him I, you know I'm a big art uh, collector and he's like, oh, you know, he's got a really long list, but, you know, I'll put you on there. And when I mentioned it to him at New York Comic Con, I said, like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I remember you. He's like, you know what, I'll give you a call in a couple weeks and, you know, we'll, we'll discuss it. And he told me, he's like, listen, you know, he's about to start, like, a huge painting. He's like, but I asked him to, you know, do that ahead of time because, you know, I think he, you know, he knew I was a fan. He's like, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know I wasn't walking around Comic Con with 700 boxes of comic books <laughs> to get signed mm-hmm. by, uh, by one uh, comic book artist. So, I mean, I think there are people out there that do respect, like, the fan and stuff like that. But at the same point, like, Joe Gala, like, I want to give that money before I give money to anyone else. You know, the guy's, like, a yeah. legend, like, yeah. oldest living Batman artist, I believe. Yep. Hmm. All right. So, I think that pretty much wraps up this episode. I want to give a thank you again to Tom for joining us today. We'll uh, we'll put all your contact invo- info awesome. excuse me, in the show notes. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you for being here. Thanks. It was a lot um, of fun. A lot of fun. Hopefully, uh, our next episode will be in another two weeks. So, until next time, remember... Don't be the geeks! 